Eight teams on the court Tuesday night in the Little General battle for the Armory Tournament. Let's start off with the Pepsi Championship. Greater Beckley taking on Elkins. First quarter, Kendrick Wilson on the right wing. He makes the shot and gets fouled. And yeah, he's excited. GVC up early on. A few minutes later, Corey Harper's shot is off target, but somehow he regains possession, passes to Max Johnson as he falls to the ground, who passes to Malachi Watson, who drains the triple. Still first quarter, Crusaders with the ball. Sherlock Padmore tries the shot a couple times. Can't knock it down, so Caden Smallwood gives it a try. That doesn't work. Now it's John Rose, and third time's the charm. Greater Beckley down by one. Then Max Johnson driving towards the hoop. He lays it in with ease. Elkins up 13-10. Moving to the second, ball nearly out of bounds, but Crusaders somehow recover as El Carmichael puts it in. Greater Beckley adds to their lead. Less than a minute left in the half. We finish things exactly how we started. Addison McCauley nails the shot and is fouled. Crusaders up 28-24 at the half. They go on to win 81-68. Princeton Tigers and Wyoming East Warriors looking to battle it out in hopes of advancing to the next round. The winner going on to face Greater Beckley. Early in the first, Chris Joyce gives a little floater that bounces off the backboard, decides to hang out with the rim for a minute, but will fall. Princeton looking good early on. But don't count out Wyoming East yet as Cole Lambert makes a little bank shot floater of his own. Wyoming East now down one, but plenty of time left. Score 11-10 Princeton on top near the end of the first. Princeton put up big numbers in the second quarter, ending the half with this shot by Devon Edwards. And that shot's good for three no matter what league you play in. Princeton goes into the half with the lead 52-42. to Wyoming East made a monstrous effort to come back in this game, proven here by Tanner Witten with his two-hand slam. They'd come within one late in the fourth, but ultimately would fall short. Princeton takes this one 63-58. Next up, Shady Spring Tigers duking it out with Cabell Midlands Knights. Both teams looking sharp coming into this game, but as we all know, there can only be one winner. Shady Spring showing patience early on as they work the ball, hoping to find an open man, and they find him in the corner as Chapman knocks down the open three. At the end of the first, your score 17-12, Tigers on top. In the second quarter now, Cabell Midland Schmidt looks to take it down the lane, fights off a defender with his right arm, and finishes at the rim with that same hand. Knights still trailing 27-17. Schmidt's layup would be the last points the Knights would score in the first half as here Chapman would close out the second quarter with a teardrop, putting the Tigers up 27-17. Early in the third quarter, Cabell Midland Schmidt drives down the baseline and does his best John Morant impressions, finishing a beautiful layup and bringing his team within seven. Now in the fourth, Chapman passes it over to Maywell, who drills the three from the right wing. At this point, Shady up 48-35. The Tigers go on to maintain that lead and win this one. Your final score, 56-43. to On to the final game of the night, Woodrow Wilson hosting Huntington St. Joe. First quarter fighting Irish with the ball, but Elijah Redfern takes control on the turnover, moves down the left side towards the hoop and makes the reverse layup. Flying Eagles trail by one early. A few plays later, Maddox McMillan drives, dribbles, and sets up Samuel Peck beyond the arc. He nails the three. Woodrow keeps on fighting back in this one. Then Jesse Muncy sends a long pass to Xavion Johnson, who lays it in. That ties things up at 12. Still first quarter now, Caden Earim on the left side, driving, makes the close-range basket. St. Joe's regains the lead. Moving to the second quarter, Redfern finds Keenan Cook at the top of the key. He passes to McMillan right in front of him. Nothing but net for the senior, but Woodrow still trailing 26-24. Later, Johnson driving finds Philip Ignatitis right under the basket. His shot is good. St. Joe up 28-26 at the half. It's a close one throughout, but fighting Irish hang on 73-72, your final.